Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Peter Johnson at WheatPeat, RealAgriculture.com. We're here in the wheat plots. I love being in the wheat plots. We're here with Ellen Sperry, General Manager, CNM Seeds. Ellen is a walking book of knowledge. We're in front of some plots. You can clearly see great differences in coloration. I can see some leaves rolling over there, some real blue stuff here. So Ellen, in terms of, of these different colors, and it's been really dry in parts of Ontario, so, so what, what causes this and, and what's the impact in terms of the wheat crop? Yeah, so, so first of all, great thanks and welcome uh, to come and visit us. It's always great to have you here. And um, for sure, you know, we see a wide panorama of genetic response or varietal response uh, in years of drought and, and in years of anything. And that's really why we're out here is to make note of that and, and see the different responses of uh, some of these genetics and end up with the right one at the end. But um, as you can see, just in front of us, there's uh, this one I would call is a much more waxy type. Uh, this one would be less waxy. You can see the heads look a little more brighter green. And as you pointed out, one or two down, we have varieties that are, um, that are starting to show or have been showing leaf roll. So how do I know that this one's a waxy? How do you know it's waxy? So, uh, uh, so I would sort of um, connect it to when you apply furniture polish, let's say to your furniture, for anybody who still polishes their furniture. But so you apply that, uh, spray that product on, there's a kind of a white haze and then, then you polish it off. So the white haze is wax. So that's similar to the varieties, but they obviously develop that uh, on their own. That's part of their genetics. And when you take the leaf, particularly the underside on really waxy types, as you rub it off, you can actually oh, cool. rub the wax off. Very cool. Very and cool. it becomes somewhat more glossy. So, so is that does that help w from a drought perspective? I mean, if there's no stress, I get that it probably doesn't make a big difference. But but from a stress environment, what's best? The, the waxy, the no wax, the leaf roll? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. And that's why we have all these plots here to try and figure that out, I guess, as well. Um, and certainly in years where there's more stress, you do see the waxy types are much, much more wax layers. So that would lead one to, to think that certainly they do provide some protection from losing that moisture out of those leaves when it gets extremely dry. The roll types as well, I've had breeders tell me that that is a response where they're trying to hold on to a little more moisture too. So it's, it's probably a combination of the genetics they have inherently and, and how they react. But at the end of the season, what, what really counts is uh, what's going to go into that bag off that combine. So Yeah, so neat stuff and, and take note of everything. And I, I see a little bit of cereal leaf beetle damage and you'd almost wonder does the, the wax on the leaf or the lack of wax on the leaf make that variety more uh, attractive to the cereal leaf beetle mm -hmm. than the others? But, but I don't know that we, we even know that. Cool differences in leaf morphology though. At the end of the day, as you say, you never know till the combine runs That's through. That's right. The combine tells the tale. Yep. So pay attention to the plots. This is where we learn and it's really the yield data that matters, but many other things that you can learn, standability, lodging, the disease notes, everything. If you get the chance, you absolutely must go to the plots with Ellen. She truly is just a wealth of knowledge. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com. Grow great wheat. <music>